have legal news this morning, uh, mostly unrelated to the president's address last night. Federal investigators have seized cell phones and other electronic devices from the Manhattan home and office of Rudy Giuliani, one time personal lawyer to former President Trump, according to sources with knowledge of the investigation. The raids suggest the Justice Department is ramping up its investigation into Giuliani's dealings with Ukrainian officials used to dig up dirt on Joe Biden before the 2020 election. The New York Times reports FBI agents executed search warrants around 6 a.m. at Mr. Giuliani's apartment on Madison Avenue and his Park Avenue office in Manhattan. The execution of search warrants is an extraordinary action for prosecutors to take against a lawyer, let alone a lawyer for a former president. The move marked a major development in the long-running investigation into Mr. Giuliani, which examines some of the same people and conduct that were at the center of Mr. Trump's first impeachment trial. In a statement from the former New York mayor through his attorney, Giuliani denied any wrongdoing and said the raid was a, quote, clear example of a corrupt double standard, one for high-level Democrats whose blatant crimes are ignored, such as Hillary Clinton, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, and Republicans who are prominent supporters of and defenders of President Trump. Joining us now, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, under then U.S. attorney Rudy Giuliani, Frederick Lawrence. He also served as the chief of the Civil Rights Unit and is the author of the book entitled Punishing Hate, Bias Crimes Under American Law. Uh, Thank you so much for being uh, with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Um, Let's talk about your your former boss, um, what kind of charges he must be facing and the severity of what must have gone on to allow these search warrants to be executed. You have to have probable cause that you're going to find evidence of a crime uh, wherever you're going to execute a search warrant. That's the standard rule. When you apply it to a lawyer, uh, it's even higher. And when you apply it to the lawyer for a former president, it's higher still. So the Justice Department must have a very strong case. They must be ready to go. And I assure you that this one went all the way up the, the chain. This was not a decision made by some line assistant U.S. attorney. This went up the chain. Uh, And I think they're getting very close to being ready to move on an indictment on my former boss. What's your sense of what the charges against him might look like? Charges are quite serious. The idea of a foreign agent, a representative of a foreign government, not registering under the foreign uh, the laws for foreign agents um, can be punished from up to five years in prison, $250,000 fine. So these are very serious crimes. And again, before the Department of Justice goes after somebody who is quite uh, so well known and connected with the former president of the United States, they make sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed. So I think it's a serious crime. And I think they are very confident of their charges. They wouldn't have gotten this far. Very interesting. All right. Stay with us for a second. I want to change gears, but this is in your area of expertise as well. So I'd like to discuss it with you. Three Georgia men have been charged with federal hate crimes in the death of Ahmed Arbery. A federal grand jury made the announcement yesterday. Gregory McMichael, his son, Travis McMichael and William Bryan are each charged with one count of interference with rights and one count of attempted kidnapping. Both McMichaels also face charges of using guns to inflict violence. The father and son duo chased 25-year-old Arbery through a suburban neighborhood outside Brunswick, Georgia, in their truck. Arbery died after being shot during that encounter on February 23, 2020. The indictment alleges the defendants used force and threats to intimidate and interfere with Arbery's right to use a public street because he was black. The three men, who are white, also face charges in state court, including murder. They have pleaded not guilty. A trial date has not yet been said, set for this case. So, Frederick, how unusual is something like this uh, in, in this kind of a case? Can you help us understand what exactly it is sure. that's been brought against these men? Yeah, I know those charges sound a little odd, as if the biggest thing was his right to use a public street. The reason for that is that's what creates the federal crime. Typically, murder, kidnapping, these are state crimes, not federal crimes. When you do it across a state line, it becomes a federal crime, or in this case, interference with federally protected rights, like the right to travel, the right to use public roads on the basis of race, that becomes a federal crime. I have to tell you, Casey, this harkens back to an earlier time where states would not enforce certain laws and states would not investigate certain crimes. So the federal government had to step in. 
That's what happened here. This happened a long time ago, and the case sort of languished. And then they got great public attention. The Fed stepped in. So it's it's unusual, but not unheard of. And the penalty for a federal civil rights crime where death results is is the death penalty. So whatever you think of the death penalty, it just tells you the severity of this crime and the severity of the uh, the federal investigation and what now is ready to be a prosecution. Wow. All right. Frederick Lawrence, thank you very much. We really appreciate having your expertise this morning. Thank you for getting up early for us.